Tell me, though, what's his technique? That last strike, it seems invincible. Hello and welcome to Sons of the Dragon, the Immortal Lives podcast. My name is Connor McKenna. My name is Carl Stout. And today we're going to be covering Power Man and Iron Fist 4 in the new series. But first, it's been a while, like a month, since the last episode. Um, <laughs> it's because my mic broke, it took ages for one to arrive. And Carl bought me one, but I thought I was like having a weird hallucinating dream when he did that so I bought one and then his was late then mine was anyway it was all a mess and then life got in the way for a couple of weeks but we're back now and because there's new mics and stuff please excuse any technical issues if there is I will definitely be working on them but I'm not uh superman I don't know um yeah (laughs) Speaking of Superman, um, some sad news. Muhammad Ali died yesterday, which isn't too surprising, but it does still really suck. So, yeah, he was a pretty, pretty big deal in, like, obviously the boxing world, but, you know, for a lot of martial artists as well, he was pretty inspirational. I mean, I highly recommend you just watch any of his speeches on YouTube or any stuff with him on YouTube, because he's a really funny guy. So, and I also recommend checking out... If you haven't read it yet, uh, Superman vs. Muhammad Ali is a really awesome, fun story. It sounds stupid, and it is kind of stupid, but like it is actually a lot better than you'd think, so I definitely recommend that too. Sadly, I haven't read that since it came out. <laughs> wow, you're old. <laughs> yes, yes I am. Yeah. See, I, I wasn't born then, so... I just and had I, some... I had the uh, I had the giant two foot tall version. Ah, oh, really? Yeah. Keyword I still being. Got a bunch of them. Oh wow! Awesome. Yeah, I really want to get like a poster of that, including two of uh, the ones Iron Fist is in, oh, which cool. was a spider Spider Man one, and then there was a martial art one with um, Sons of the Tiger and whatnot in it. Speaking of that uh there's a uh what is there a master of kung fu epic collection coming Uh, out on the master of kung fu omnibus just hit it's 125 dollars i think it's like 35 the first 35 issues they're breaking in that omnibus in three issues uh so it's like the first 35 issues because issue first appearance of shang chi is actually like Marvel premiere 15. Yeah. So it won 15, 16, and then it just turned into uh, the hands of Shang-Chi, Master of Kung Fu, with issue 17. So there actually is no number one issue. And uh, if uh, the website I like to promote, uh, Overstock Trades, I believe it's called. Is it in-stock trades? In stock trades, that's yeah. right. In stock trades dot com, of course, is selling it at. Uh, this is interesting. It's got two different covers, and as you know, the cover is just literally the slip cover, a piece of paper yeah. wrapped around a hardcover book. Um, the, there's one with the original cover for Marvel Premiere 15, and one with a newer rendition of Shang Chi, like throwing a kick flying through the air in the middle of a city. They're selling the original cover version for like. Sixty-eight seventy-five because it's like forty-two percent off or something like that. But the one with the newer cover, they're actually selling at half price, so it's only like sixty-two fifty. So that's gonna be the one I'm getting because guess what? The insides are the freaking same. It kind of sucks though. Because I prefer the old cover. I prefer the old cover too, but the old cover is still in the book. Yeah, and when you the book. On a bookcase, what's what are you gonna see? You're gonna see the binding. Yeah, the binding is the same. That that is definitely true. Um, I look at my bookcase and it's uh, covered in a giant 
I did some impulse buying, so yeah, there's things there. So I say, if someone came into my room, they'd think I'm some sort of weird fanatic with like a Superman shrine because I found a store with a bunch of merchandise. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, that's it. So I'm definitely planning to get that at some point. My financial situation is less than ideal, um, but yeah, uh, and we'll cover stuff from it, I'm sure. Probably not like to the degree that we're doing, you know, the Iron Fist original series, um, because we are an Iron Fist podcast, despite the fact that we don't, that we talk about other things a lot. Because, because it's fun, okay, guys? Because we're still fanboys. Yeah, we're an Iron Fist podcast, but we do talk about other things. Like Batman versus Superman. Yeah, no, that bonus episode's still coming, and no... Oh, well, actually, I haven't talked about Carl in this, so I hope he agrees with me. <laughs> um, I wasn't intending on doing a Civil War episode, because I don't think there's as much to talk about. Um, we can, like, talk about it in the Batman vs. Superman episode. If you know what I mean? Well, let me just ask you this. Did you at least enjoy it more than Winter Soldier? Oh, no, definitely. I really enjoyed Civil War, but the thing is, like, there isn't much to talk about. Like, there's... Bam vs. Superman had more problems, and for me it had more highlights as well, so there's more to talk about with that, and so many things went wrong about Bam vs. Superman. Civil War was a very sort of clean, tidy movie. Um, uh-huh. I agree completely. So, I don't think it was like the best movie of all time, like some people are saying. I don't think it's like the second coming. Um, no, I personally still think Winter Soldier was better. I think Iron Man 1 is still like the best Marvel uh, movie. The only, yeah. Speaking of Iron Man, he just stated he's willing to do a 4 now. Yeah, I wouldn't mind a 4, because then maybe we can get, like, a real Mandarin. I don't know. Sorry. Yes, because that's, if, if, if anyone purchased the 4 DVD, there was a short special on there about the Mandarin, or uh, what was his name, Eddie, or something like that? The yeah. Actor, being in jail. And it was funny, but it also revealed that the Mandarin actually was real and was pissed. Yeah. And that's all I'm going to say about it. I believe if you search hard enough online, you can find it. Because I think I did. I found it online. And yeah. I watched it, and it was, it was a good short. But yeah, the Mandarin's real, the Mandarin's out there, and that's just, like, like left hanging. Yeah, I'm not sure if they do it into a movie, because it might confuse people. But I was hoping it was going to, because they did a little bit of the whole Agents, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. stuff, I thought the Mandarin possibly was going to show up there, but they haven't touched it. I don't know if he yet, uh... Wait, did we see the actor who played the real Mandarin? Was it still Ben Kingsley? No. Or... Oh, okay. Never mind that. No, still, it's just, it's, uh, one of the Mandarin's disciples comes to, uh, well, I'm not gonna ruin it. See the shark. Okay. Um. But it's funny, and it's also very interesting. There's also, but, uh, sorry, continue. News has come out about the extended cut that is going to be on the DVD. And someone involved with it said, if you hated the movie, you're still not going to like it. <laughs> what, what, is, is this Batman vs. Superman? Good. Yes. Yeah, actually, I was actually, I was just about to bring that up. Um, yeah, luckily, I didn't hate the movie. Um, I hated that it could have been really good. So, I'm hoping that, uh, the director's cut will fill in some gaps. I know there's a deleted scene that's already confirmed to be in there where it shows Superman helping and saving a bunch of people after the building blows up. So. I didn't read that one. Yeah, no, that would be nice. thought it was kind of weird how he just flew off, but I just assumed that everyone died immediately, so whatever. Um, I, I heard there's going to be the introduction to a female character that was completely cut out of... Uh, oh, least... more characters, really? Yep. I mean, I, I'll, I'll watch the hell out of it, like, because, as I said, I love Henry Cavill and Ben Affleck in their respective roles, so, you know, I'll, I'll watch it. And hey, maybe the movie will be more coherent, which will lead to me really liking the movie. 
Um, I'm assuming they mean I, pe- by people who hated the movie, maybe it's people who just don't like the tone of the movie. I don't know. Um, I do. I do think it's interesting that I, um, uh, Jeremy Iron, who, as you know, played Alfred in the film, yeah, actually spoke not positively about the film. He basically agreed that it was a hot mess. Yeah, and I agree too. It was a jumbled mess. Like the editing was awful, and that's my complaint. I don't really. There's a lot of complaints about Superman's portrayal and Batman's portrayal. Like, oh, Batman kills people. Superman's a narcissistic jerk, and it's like, well, I don't know. I thought they were fine. I mean, the the the, it lit- the movie literally throws in your face that Superman's just trying to do the right thing. Anyway, uh, we can talk about all this on that episode. Um, which we might wait for the extended cut. What do you think? <laughs> who knows? Yeah, who knows? It's All right. Um, out pretty soon, isn't it? I don't know. Isn't there rumors it's going to be released in theaters? That'd be funny. There's talk of the extended cut, the R-rated cut, um, hitting the theaters, but I saw nothing hundred percent on it. Why is there an R-rated cut? Like, I'm not going to be, like, a funny duddy and go, oh, you can do it, but it just doesn't seem like it would organically fit in. I don't know, maybe maybe some of the Batman stuff. I think uh, um, the, the, the person who was involved at that article I read said the R-cut is literally just more violence that was cut out of the film. So I'm pretty sure it probably deals with Batman. Because the movie already shot, um, actually, no, what, uh, that, <laughs> we're going into spoiler territory. Some people might not have seen it yet, so, um, but, yeah, so, moving on, um, <laughs> let's get into this issue, shall we, unless you have anything else to? No. Okay. Well, I, I spoke with. Oh, uh, yeah. I spoke with David Walker. Uh, yesterday, and pretty much asked him, David Walker, as you out there should know, is the one who is currently writing uh, Power Man and Iron Fist. I asked him, what was up with Danny missing the Dragon Brand? I said, is, is Marvel trying to shy away from the tattoo across the chest? And he pretty much told me that that was a fantastic question and he had no answer for me uh he's because pretty much he's the writer and so he was not given any information that Danny should not have the dragon on his chest so draw your own conclusions I'm still gonna go with the uh, artist kerfuffle I mean going through the old series we've seen how many kerfuffles there's been with his dragon tattoo so uh-huh. Yeah, um, no, if there's no dragon brain in the Netflix show, I will write. And if they go for the characterization of Ultimate Iron Fist, which I'm sure many people know, I hate that. I hate Ultimate Iron Fist, the stupid hippie surfer dude. Now, for the, the year old. listeners, he's referring to the cartoon Ultimate Iron Fist. Yes, not, not, not the comic. Not, not the comic version where he was wearing the green vest and a traitor. And had a kid with Colleen Wayne. That's weird. Good outfit, though. Um. <laughs> Alright, so. Street, let... street Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, Power Man and Iron Fist 4. Um, we have a cover, and it's, well, madness. Uh, Danny's trying to hold Jenny as she's smashing into Luke Cage, and there's a big pizza thing. Just in shambles, there's some nice background. No, it's in New York, there's a phone flying and... I don't know, maybe you can describe better than me, it's just mayhem, really. There's a happy dog barking at the start. (laughs) I'm sorry, but to me it just looks like Iron Fist's about to take a bite out of Jenny's ass. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Well, there's someone... I'm gonna get me some of that. Someone taking a bite out of a pizza in the background. Yes, girls trying to stuff a slice of pizza in her pie hole. Um, Jenny's charged with mystical energy. Looks like she's power stuffing Power Man 
and Iron Fist is got her around the waist in the most odd position I've ever seen, and I don't know where Jenny's right arm is. I honestly, where the hell is it? Yeah, probably behind <laughs> Iron Fist. Uh, 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 I don't know. Anyway, it, I mean, I don't think it's a bad cover. It's just like chaotic and mayhem, so that's why it's so hard to yep. describe. Um, but then we start off with prologue, story of Jenny Rose. So it's <laughs> written by David Walker, illustrated by uh, I can't remember his first name. Do you remember his first name? I can't believe it doesn't say it. It doesn't. Yeah, no, it, and it never eventually says it either. Is it David? No, it can't be David. Oh, I feel bad. Michael now. Green? I want to say Michael Green. Hmm. I don't know. I don't have any old issues here. And then there's the Inca. Wait, Inca? Do they say Luffridge. Oh. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> just, uh, let's just yeah. We're do, slipping. Do you want to? Yeah, we are. Do you want to do the prologue? Uh, you do it. Uh, okay. Um. So, the story of Jenny Royce, and it has a little narration thing. Jenny Royce managed the day-to-day operations of Heroes for Hire many years. She's a happy secretary doing stuff. In a very, you know, disheveled office, uh, the walls are broken and stuff. Um, Jenny's employment came to an end when the Heroes for Hire went out of business, forcing her to seek prospects elsewhere. So, in other words, when Iron Fist died, sort of, not really, he didn't. It was a plant person. Anyway, um, I personally can't wait till we get into. The old Power Man and Iron Fist, because I honestly don't remember this character. I can wait. So I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know if she's made up or she actually is in the issues. Yeah, I, I don't remember know. The, I remember the blonde hippie kid, because their offices were above the theater. Yeah, I remember the that. But I don't remember a Jenny. And, uh... Anyway, then Jenny met Eugene Mason, a.k.a. Crime Buster, and soon began dating him. But he was a bad crime fighter, and he was physically and emotionally abusive, so he, like, beat her and stuff, and he, had, he even has the wife-beating tank top on. Um, yes, she's battered and bruised looking in this flashback, and through an unusual set of circumstances, Jenny killed Eugene. Despite being possessed at the time, Jenny was convicted for the killing of her boyfriend and sentenced to prison. You know, this... Surely this had to happen somewhere. Like, this had to have happened in some issue... Because, like, it never goes into what she was possessed by or anything, unless we're going to find out later, but... It's just very odd that it's just like, oh yeah, she was possessed. It's like, well, what's the difference between that and her just accidentally killing him or something? You know what I mean? Um... Well, to be honest, if she really did, you know, constantly get beat out of her by this guy, oops, sorry, swore, um, I would think some self-defense play would fall in Yeah, there. Uh, that's what I was ex- Anyway, um, uh, yeah, she was sentenced to prison. Um, uh, prison life proved difficult due to her affiliation with the Heroes for Hire. Um... She got a job working in the prison library where she met former gang leader Mariah Pillard, aka Black Mariah. Essentially, they became friends. Black Mariah, you know, started protecting her while Jenny helped her out with her exams and stuff. Um, and for her GED, they just became BFFs. And which uh, do they have GEDs in Australia? I don't think so. You know what GED stands I for? I used to. General general education diploma, at least that's what it's called in Connecticut, and it basically means it's the equivalent of a high school diploma. Oh, okay. Um, we we just take like uh year eleven and twelve again, like there's courses for adults. So yeah. So Mariah helped Jenny adjust to life in prison. In this picture, we show her like defending Jenny against two other girls coming at her. As their friendship continued to develop, Jenny and Mariah began to share their dreams with each other. 
Mariah is doing Jenny's hair in this picture into the red-topped mohawk we are currently used to. They begin to make plans for the day when they both no longer are incarcerated. And now we flash back to the now, where Jenny is now some lizard-slash-demon red mohawk Jurassic Park nightmare, screaming in a nice black word bubble, I'm going to crush your bones to dust. And Black Mariah's like crushing bones to dust was never part of the original plan. Yeah, that's your call. Ghostbusters. I was gonna say Ghost Rotter. But the uh the guy's version, not the girl's version. Well, you, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> they need the Spanish Doctor Strange is what they need. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> So Luke Cage is exclaiming, Jenny, we're here to help you. And Iron Fist is like, that's right, whatever is happening, we can fix it. And she says... And Tombs- oh, hey, Tombstone has the best look in the background. He's just stupefied. And we have the uh, Reaper brothers yeah. s- staring wide-eyed at what's going on. So then Jenny leaps towards them, obviously. Uh, you know, you're going to start begging for mercy, just being evil. Uh, Black Mariah is looking pretty reluctant she's like that's the last time i ever listened to necro sinclair about anything you know that person who gave him the from the amulet um now what was what's her uh what's necro's super villain name again i'm totally blank oh uh, i can't remember um i'll look it up real quick google where are you girl we hope google so, no, wasn't she married to the Reaper? Or the Grim Reaper, rather? Which is somehow, isn't he, like, Hawkeye's brother or some crap? Um, I think it's actually just Necro. Yeah, yeah, no, her alias is Necro. So, I know she had some, some freaky-deaky black-and-white outfit with an odd cape yep. to it. So she was just called Necro. Yep. All righty. Yeah. So um. So with these oddball purple power bands emitting from the jewels in her now lizard-like body, she's lifting, picking up a red or purplish colored. I'd say it's compact more of a hot pink, head. to be honest. But well, each to their. Um, and from uh, over the thing we have a word bubble saying this is bad <laughs> yeah so she's about to throw it at um, you know the two stooges um, and I just like uh, remind me what did Cena Magico say and it reminds you that you know uh, it can earn, the flow of the super soul so it can only be defeated by a strength greater than the strength it gives what does that mean it it says just use stronger magic <laughs> than what the super stone stone is. I think that's that's how I would interpret it because that's what he says. But whatever. Um, and uh, Lonnie is asking, "You fools can stop her, right?" Yeah. And uh, Iron Fist is apologizing for getting them caught up. The interesting face. Um, <laughs> And Black Mariah is again screaming at Jenny, girl, you gotta stop this. This is cray cray business. And, and she throws the car screaming, I'm just getting started. Sweet Christmas. And Luke stops the car with his, um, body. Um, drops an elbow into the car. Car parts are flying everywhere. Lonnie looks like he takes a transmission differential to the face getting cold cocked and then we have the Reaper brothers going oh man we should help the boss and the other brother's like how I don't know pray <laughs> so this get Tombstone out of here yeah so Luke Cage decides to tank Jenny um and he gets some car he gets a car door and yeah they're fighting um Luke Cage is trying to talk to her but she's having none of it now Black Mariah comes in with her cutesy face um Hey, boo-boo. Girl, you're looking fierce with all those tentacles, but it wasn't supposed to be like this. And then there's having a... And it's a flashback to prison. 
They're having a heart to heart in prison with Necra, I'm assuming, just on the bed, like above them. Um, yep. She's in the trap bunk. And Jenny's essentially just complaining that she's been nothing but weak her entire life. You know, people just walked all over her, etc. And, you know, she's saying she's weak because she actually got possessed. So, yeah. Black Mariah's, you know, offering her encouragement. You're not weak, you know, you're strong, blah, blah, blah. And then Necra, with, <laughs> with the actual book, Street Magic, is, um, says, you want strength? I'll show you where you can get real power. And there is a book called Street Magic, so I guess that's a thing. Um, and, and then back to current times, and she's screaming, this is exactly how it was supposed to be. And Black Mariah is basically like, girl, you know, I'm all in favor of getting my revenge on, serve it up with some extra hot sauce, and I'm good to go. But I think you might be a little, I don't know, out of control with this. And Luke is crawling out of the rubble that he's been thrown into. Look at that. Out of control. Look at that what? middle panel. <laughs> he's he's like uh you know Diglett from Pokemon. He's like one of those things <laughs> popping out of the ground. <laughs> She's got out of control. I've never been more in control. And Luke is hollering, as much as I don't like saying it, Mariah's right, Jenny. And she curls a piece of large shrapnel at him. Stop talking. Then Iron Fist yeah. comes in. Destroys it with his Uses iron his fist. Iron fist to destroy it. Thanks, brother. Anytime. Even though I don't know if that would actually hurt Luke. really have hurt Luke Cage at all. Hey, Iron Fist has to do uh, something. Okay, so <laughs> um, Luke Cage has received quite the power boost from when he was originally out. He's much stronger and tougher than he ever was. Um, I don't know if we're going to see that in the Netflix series or not. Um, Originally, bullets just stopped. You could still stab him. Because, as you know, even with a bulletproof vest, you can stab a bulletproof vest. I don't know you could stab Luke. I thought only Adamantium could, uh... No, I pretty much remember. I think he was getting stabbed before. Oh, okay. Well, then. Um... Arrows also go through bulletproof vests. Bulletproof vest is still a stitched fiber. That's the thing. And the point of a knife or a arrowhead will separate the fibers and then cut them. So it will go through it. It will slow it down, of course, but it can still go through. Unless it's one of those SWAT vests that also has the metal plates in it, then obviously that won't go through that. And now the Reaper, one of the Reaper brothers is like, I thought that necklace wasn't supposed to have any real power, boss. And uh, Lonnie is saying a.k.a. Tombstone. It never worked for me. Seeing what it does to folks, can't say I'm too upset about that now. The whole thing was it can only work on people who are weak instead of people who are strong. So, Who also apparently need all the tattoos and must recite the enchant the same, which I don't think he did any of that. Yeah. He just talked about give him the power. And, you know, essentially James is still going crazy. Black Mirage is like, hey, can you stop with this talk of killing? And uh, Iron Fist Power Man are discussing how to stop her, so they're just like, well, maybe we should just take the necklace off. And <laughs> in a very awkward panel, <laughs> Luke starts to throw Danny, and Danny's like, hey, uh, you sure you know what you're doing? And Luke goes, of course I'm sure. Wolverine taught me this when we were in the Avengers. Um, it looks like he's going to give him a power YG, honestly. I don't, I don't think it's the first time, because I remember when... Uh, Danny killed that uh, clone of Thor. Uh, someone threw him. I just can't remember who it was. I think it was Spider Man. That was yeah, Spider Man did it. He used his webbing. Yeah. He grabbed them with webbing and yelled fist him. <laughs> and Iron Fist is like, I hate it when people say that. One of the only good but... moments in that entire <laughs> run. <laughs> Stop being a hater. I'll hate so Bendis. I mean, have you seen this She Hulk stuff? No. Uh, it's... Okay, so spoilers for Civil... Now that Hellboy's done with... Bastard. <laughs> spoilers for Civil War 2. Um, uh, skip, skip ahead, like, you know, 
a couple of minutes, if you don't want to spoil it. But essentially, She Hulk dies because she gets a missile to the chest, and it's like there's this. There was uh, I can't remember, but it's this comic artist, and he writes, you know, how to write at Marvel or something, and he's like, okay, it's just essentially event after event after event. And, ooh, there'll be a radical change to one of the main characters at the end of each event, and they're just really stupid changes. And obviously, one of the mandatory things for a Marvel event is to choose a random B, C, or D list character to kill off, in quotations. And they're still doing it, because She-Hulk is that person now in Civil War 2, and everyone's changing fundamentally. It's just so, so dumb. It's awful. People, please do not buy Civil War 2, unless you enjoy it. But like, you know, it's just Marvel has been doing this for years outside of, you know, the Avengers and stuff. It's been okay, but like, you know, all their big mainstream A listers are always in these big stupid events. It's always really stupid stuff, like Nick Fury killing the Watcher, all that dumb, dumb, dumb stuff. Um Yeah, it's just it's all shock value. It's just awful and, and like they keep doing it and Bendis is going to be in charge one day. he's going to be the editor in chief and he's awful he's writing these big crappy events which just suck and they're just shock value there's nothing really good about them they're all game changers in heavy quotations <laughs> it's like well if they're game changers why do they keep happening this, I don't know and then you look at DC comics they're not as bad but they're still pretty bad you know they Come on, they've just rebooted their entire universe again, like the third time in five years. Yeah, and they killed New 52 Superman. I don't know if that's going to be permanent, but, like, it's pretty... You know, they're just like, oh... The problem with New 52 Superman, right, is he started off really good. And he had some really good runs, but there were some runs which were... And because they got writers, because they wanted Superman to appeal... To the masses, because as a Superman fan, I know that, you know, not everyone likes Superman. A lot of people think he's boring and outdated, etc. Um, so, to counter that, instead of getting famous writers to write good stories like Birthright and stuff, which I know has gotten people into Superman, they're like, okay, let's get writers who don't like Superman and have them write him. Which is why some of those runs <laughs> came off as awkward. And so, their solution is, because the characters do have some really good ones, but their solution is, is, oh, let's just bring back the Superman from post-crisis and really clumsily have him replace the New 52 Superman. And they kill the New 52 Superman. And it's like it's spit in the face of everyone who liked the New 52 Superman. Um, my favourite incarnation of the character was the New 52 Superman in Grant Morrison's Action Comics run. Um, and the, I'm just saying, like, you know, Marvel's bad. DC is also bad. I think they're less bad, though, because they don't... At least they're not always doing these big stupid events. Um, but, you know, from, from stuff like what I just said is, yeah. This, uh, DC is like a bunch of headless chickens running around going, rah, rah, rah. and, uh, but Marvel, I just, I don't even know. They're just bad. <laughs> it's like, it's all I can use to describe. They're just, in the, yeah, I don't know. I mean, Give me Dark Horse, but as Carl said, Hellboy has ended. Um, boo, indeed. Not happy. I have not read it yet, and I won't read it for a while because I'm still going to slowly work my way because that series is confusing to keep track of things that are happening because there's so much. So i got to read through all yeah. of it again. Cause they will I literally just finished it before we started this. Uh, you don't ever need to read it. Really? Yeah. I want to read it, though. It's just going to make you upset, and then we're going to have an hour and a half rant of you on that. I mean, uh, Hellboy's made me upset a lot, but, like, not in a way where I think it's bad writing, just that it's just generally very upsetting sometimes. Um, <coughs> that's a series, so that will have, like, crucial plot points that are from a short story, like, 20 years ago that you're supposed to remember. Oh, that... The whole ten issues is that, my friend. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Every single issue brings up something, you're like, Jesus Christ, that was like 15 years the, ago. On the one <laughs> hand, I like that. On the other hand, god damn, <laughs> I don't need to be taking notes as I'm going through or something. Like, Pretty much. Hellboy's, yeah. they, they, well, the, the one good thing is when the things happen, 
Hellboy doesn't remember. Ah, uh, so okay. What they remind him. Good, because I'm like Hellboy. I'm like, well, there's so much weird stuff going on that... I don't know. Can you refresh my memory a bit? I mean, Hellboy's one of those things, and this is a good thing. Like, I'll read a Hellboy story or a Hellboy short story, and I'll be like, what just happened? I honestly have no idea. <laughs> and I'll look it up, and there's not as much fan wikis and stuff like Marvel, so you just generally completely at a loss as to what happened. And some stories it works really well with that. So, yeah. Speaking of reading stories and not knowing what the hell happens, but it's still fantastic. I just also finished issue three of Moon Knight. I still have no clue. Is that what the hell is going on? Is that on. the new what run? Been, yes, the brand new run. Issue three just came Who's out. Who's writing it? I still have no clue. I don't even care. <laughs> I don't. I, to be honest with you, I never look at that. I just read the freaking book. <laughs> I never look who draws it. I never look who writes it. I just pick up the book and I wow. read it. But three issues in, fantastic, and I have no clue what side is up and what side is down. Yeah. And it, it and, and when every issue ends, you're just like, what the hell's going on? And when the hell's the next one coming out? Damn it. While, while we're doing random recommendations to people, um, I've been, I've, been reading, uh, there's only two Daredevil books, and I'm halfway through the second one, but I highly recommend you pick them up, because honestly, reading it, it's almost like Daredevil thrives better in a novel format than he does in a comic format. Um, it's hard to explain, I guess you should just read it, uh, the first one's called Predator's Smile, and the second one is called The Cutting Edge, they're both very, very good. Read Predator's Smile first, but yeah. I'm honestly, I was blown away. I'm like, wow, this this format works better for Daredevil than comics generally do. Um, for those types of stories, anyway, for like sort of grittier types of stories, I think the books definitely work better. I'm not saying the books are better than every Daredevil comic, but I feel like, yeah, I wish there was more Daredevil books is what I'm trying to say. Um, but yeah, no, I highly recommend people pick those up. Um, also... Marvel News, we forgot to mention at the beginning, as of 8 p.m. on Thursday night, Namor is back to Marvel. Now, what I don't understand about the article is, one, they didn't tell you who had the rights to Namor. This is about film rights. I'm going to believe it had to be Sony uh, because of the whole Fantastic Four thing. They probably had Namor stuck in there also. But since they kept rebooting Doom and never went to Namor, they never used them, so they lost the rights. Uh, but for some reason in the article, it said it didn't revert to Marvel Studios. It reverted back to Marvel Comics. And now Marvel Comics and Marvel Studios were going to have it out. So I didn't understand that. Uh, I, uh, with Namor, there's been a bunch of weird stuff going on with the rights. Um, just confusing. Like... Because, uh, you know, when I used to play Marvel Heroes, like, he was never added to the game, and I was going to say, well, why? And they're like, Marvel doesn't have the rights or something. And I was just like, what? <laughs> Who does? So I have no idea what was going on with Namor. Didn't they kill him in the comics in one of those big, stupid events? Um, pretty sure they, pretty know. sure they did, you know. The last thing I knew is he was part of the Illuminati. Yeah, no, they killed Namor, I remember that. That was so... I already covered how bad Marvel Comics are with, the, with their events and stuff, so I won't do it again. Um, I will say to any Marvel person who's listening who's doing those events constantly, stop! Stop it! Bad. Just stop. Right? Stories, not shock value. No one cares. Well, okay, I'm not going to say no one cares, but I don't give a damn about Civil War 2, because Civil War 1 was... Like, the main Civil War series was trash. All the, like, spin-offs and stuff was good, but, like, just stop. Uh, the problem is, it's obviously selling, though, because, yeah, I don't know, whatever. <sighs> Alright, enough negativity, back to... Uh... <laughs> Alright, yeah. so we have a half-page splash of Luke throwing Danny, with Luke ye- with Danny yelling, get ready for the fistball special, sorry, Jenny. And Jenny just pretty much plucks him out of the air with these power tentacles. 
And she screams, you're just like all the others attacking me, using your strength against me. And then we have a panel of Luke's face going, oh, fiddle. And then she slams Iron Fist into the ground, yelling, I'm not weak anymore. I'm strong, strong. And then she throws him through the air past Black Mariah, who says, oh, I'm sorry. Chakra, Chakra Khan, because I know that hurt. Ugh, feels like I've been run over by a truck. You wait, you okay, Kung Fu Grip? Get away from me. Watch yourself, Hong Kong, fooey. I don't know what you did to Jenny, but you changed her. I didn't change her. Prison changed her. That's what happens. Besides, did you ever really know her? That's my best friend over there. You think I want her being a monster and whatnot? Then you need to do something. Help her. That's what friends do. Sure, okay. Help my scary monster best friend. Lead the way, Kung Fu Hustle. Excellent movie, by the way. <laughs> you know, I actually haven't seen it. Oh, it's hysterical. Yeah. It sounds hysterical. And uh, the soccer one was pretty good, too. Oh, uh, you talking about that one where... Uh, probably not. But there's this one where it's, like, about a bunch of people that play, like, soccer, that the ball's on fire and it can't hit the ground. Yes. Oh, that? Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. I haven't seen it. I've seen a bit of it, and it was pretty awesome, so... I'm pretty sure it's the same guy who did come for Hustle. So now Jenny is attacking Luke. The tentacles are wrapping around his throat. Jenny, ugh, you've got to stop. You want me to stop? Now we have Lonnie and the uh, Reaper brothers hiding around the corner. Always hated Cage, but even a punk like him deserves better than this. And then Jenny's chucking Luke Cage again. I'll stop when you're all dead. And of course, she chucks him through the building where Lonnie and the Reaper brothers are hiding. So now everybody's exposed. Lonnie is again covered in stuff from the building. And one of the Reaper brothers was talking to Luke Cage, going, how'd they ever let you in the Avengers? <laughs> <laughs> hey, anyone get in the Avengers? Is there anyone who hasn't been in Avenger now? Because now that Dirt Ball's been in there, it's like, yep, yeah, there is no one else. <laughs> you can put in the Avengers. It's not even a thing now. Like, I feel like an Avengers membership doesn't mean anything. I think a Heroes... No. I think a Heroes for High membership means more than an Avengers membership now. Um, like, because it's just they give it to everyone. So Luke pulls Lonnie out of the rubble, says, you two need to get your boss out of here, and the Reaper Brothers are like, sound good to me, but before they can do anything... Jenny grabs all of them in her purple power tentacles. They're all up in the air, all with the tentacles twisting around them. Where do you think you're going? Let me go, let me go, let me go. And uh, Black Mariah's looking shocked. So is Iron Fist. Luke Cage has got his arm up, and then Mariah walks over to Jenny going, Jenny, listen to me. I know you've done wrong, just like I have. But now we go to flashback scene. But you've been done right, too. And it shows Power Man and Iron Fist throwing her a birthday party. And all the Queen Kong nonsense ain't going to undo all the abuse. And it shows... I honestly don't know who... I'm guessing that's supposed to be Danny visiting her in prison. Um... It's got to be. Yeah, I, yeah, I say so. I don't know. It's odd, though. It's not very... If it was Danny, I think he'd just be wearing his outfit or something to, you know, so you know it's him. I don't know. But, so we have Danny visiting her in prison. She, uh, Jenny tutoring Mariah. And she's also saying, you really want to kill these fools and then just end up back in the joint. I can't believe we got back. We get to, uh, I can't believe we get back together as a team just long enough to get killed by our former secretary. <laughs> Ain't that some fiddle battle? She wasn't our secretary. She was a wait. We're back together as a team? Really? Oh, Danny, stop. I mean, these guys are the worst. Like, if they... <laughs> all right, all right. I was banging the Avengers before, but these guys are getting beaten up by their former secretary, so that's pretty bad, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and so now Jenny's covering her monster face, and uh, Mariah's talking to her again. I've done a lot of bad things, and I ain't gonna stand by and let my friend become a monster. So if you're gonna kill your homegirl... You best go ahead and get it done. She's going, I can't, I won't. No, the power, where is it going? Um, so, yeah, the 
Soulstone is essentially losing its hold on Jenny. Um, Iron Fist is still going, you're actually reforming the team. Um, and Luke Cage is like, get your head in the game, you drug addled moron. I'm just assuming he's on drugs. <laughs> and now Jenny is looking even more raptor lizard like, grabbing Mariah around her throat, breaking her chain, going, You're my friend, why do you want to make me weak? And Mariah's going, Burr. Looks like something from Conan. <laughs> <laughs> and Danny goes, She's struggling, I think she's about to hit her breaking point. Well, then, as they're both charging towards her. I guess we gotta help her get By there. By abusing her physically. Right. So right back <laughs> to this physical abuse, which is, I think, what should be used. Come on, Jenny, we don't want to hurt you. We want to help you. Friends only hurt always. Jenny, please. I don't want to hurt anymore. Zaboom. You know, I can't remember Iron Fist and Luke doing anything, like, bad to her, except... I don't know, I mean, I guess she ended up in prison, but that wasn't really their fault. So they go flying backwards. Jenny is now in a crater, back to normal, with some frizzed-out orange hair. And Mariah runs over to her. How you doing, boo-boo? She's crying. What happened to me? You went a little off the rails, that's all. We got you back, girl. I felt so much hate. I wanted to destroy everything. And it looks like also that the tattoos are gone. And as yeah. Mariah is holding her, telling her everything's going to be okay. Not to make her bust out with their favorite jam from the Lion King. Wow. She slowly takes off the necklace and hands it over to Luke. As she's singing, can you feel the love tonight? Yeah. And Danny says, it's over. Told you, Senor Magico knew his stuff. The power of the Super Stone, Soul Stone can only be defeated by the Strength greater than the strength it gives. Now, yeah. Now, Lonnie is like, that belongs to me. <laughs> oh, before things get ugly. Things already got ugly, Lonnie. Or ain't you looked in a mirror recently? What my partner is trying to say is there's no way we're giving you something with this much power. And that you're ugly. That too. And of course, Lonnie's like, you idiots don't even know what you started. Nobody messes with Lonnie Lincoln and gets away with it. It's, they beat him up in, like, the first issue. It's, <laughs> like, trash his office and everything. Um, and then Iron Fist makes the comment, he knows we can't hear most of what he says, right? And <laughs> Cage goes, I used to think it was some kind of power play, but honestly, I don't anymore. <laughs> and so... Uh, Jenny's apologizing, and she's like, what's going to happen now? And, uh, you know, Blackmore was like, whatever it is, we're in it together. And <laughs> so, uh, Luke Cage is on the phone, talking to Jessica Jones, um, and then they're both, like, going on about this Danny and Luke being back together thing, and Jessica Jones is like, why don't you just come out and say, Danny and I are back together, it'll make us both feel better, so just say it. Um, Danny's like, is that, is that Jessica? Tell her I said hey. Um, and, yeah, Luke's like, we're talking when I get home, and then I just gets mad because, uh, he didn't tell her he said hey. This is why Jessica hates me. I'm still waiting for next one. Um, and Luke Cage is like, she doesn't hate you. Let's go, we've got something to take care of. And they take the Super Stole Stone back to Senor Magico. Magico. Yeah. Um, talks of his astral storage unit guarded by hell spawn pitfalls yeah. and there's no place safer for him to put the necklace and he goes now tell me what's the deal you two back together Luke looks at Danny and goes sure and throws his hand up in the air and Danny raises both fists in the air fists in the air and goes yes so and then someone's filming them as they walk off and, uh, Danny's going, you know, you should consider some kind of costume. No costume, but Power Man needs a costume. So I'm already regretting this, and they're getting filmed as they walk up down the street. And I forgot to mention before, um, that, uh, <laughs> what, when Danny says, tell Jessica, so I said, hey, um, Black Mariah and Jenny are being carted off to prison again. 
Oh. Prison? Court. I don't know, but they're getting arrested, which makes complete sense. I'm glad that that happened, otherwise it would be too rosy for me. Oh, as for, uh, somebody posted online the reason why, uh, she hates Danny. What was it? And, Wait, was this on our page? Apparently. Oh, no, okay. no, 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 it wasn't. And, uh, somebody posted this on Tumblr. And I actually don't know what issue it's from. Uh, but Danny's standing there going, I don't know. All I know is that Luke is in danger, and I don't know you enough to trust uh. him, that you aren't part of the problem. And she's just just going, you are his brother, Danny, and this baby is his. And he just looks at her and goes, says you. Yeah, that's and, right. And uh, it looks like Looks like she's about to cry. I remember that. But then it's like, why is Danny so cold towards... Is that the first time in... Uh... Was that in... Oh, God, I'm trying to remember where that's from. Um... I don't yeah, remember, I but I'm... I old. can't remember. And you're, and you're not, so you have no I mean, hey, I'll take a reason. I'll take that. Um, now, like, okay, so... What do you think of the issue, Carl? I honestly think it's the best one so far. Uh good wrap up to this storyline lots of good action lots of good explosions uh great banter finally we have the commitments that the team is officially back together which is what we were waiting for uh again i would have liked to have seen it a little more compact than that take four yeah. years to get to this point but i'm still happy it did um i still i still have no problem with the art <laughs> i know some people still bitch but I, it's it's grown on me. I don't have an issue think, with it. And if, it if this is what it needs to look like in order for it to get out as a monthly book, it doesn't bother me at all. People who don't like the art, I don't think that their opinions ever going to change. Um, and I understand that's fine. So, especially when you're coming off like Living Weapon. Um, yeah. Anything else to add on your thoughts? No. Um, well, I guess I thought, uh, you know, I probably thought it was the best issue, because, like, the most stuff was happening, we actually got some fights. Um, the, you know, I guess we got a bit more explanation for Jenny, which was good. I felt like we could have gotten that earlier, though, which is the whole compact thing as well. Um, uh, yeah, I am really, really not a fan of Danny in this. Like, it's just, I really hope it changes, because I'm just, like, not a fan at all. Danny's just acting stupid, and this worries me. Is this how he's going to be in the Netflix show? I mean, I can't imagine that, you know. You can't have him act like this if he's the protagonist, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, but, yeah, I am not a fan. Danny just is goofy, stupid, like, even his goofiest and stupidest, like, probably in Fractions Defenders, or some Power Man and Iron Fist, like, he was still, like, fine, you know, but this, this is, like, where I'm like, wow, this is just, it seemed really out of character, um, as I said, maybe coming off Living Weapon, he's just high on life, but I'm just really not a fan of what they're doing with him, um... Luke Cage is fine. You know, he's being a fuddy-duddy, I guess, but I guess he's a dad now and everything, so... Um, but, yeah, no, Danny's just driving me crazy, to be honest. Like, I'm just not a fan at all. Um, <laughs> like, well, just to let you know, they make they both make an appearance in the new Daredevil... Or, not Daredevil, Deadpool right. issue 13 that just hit, and... Uh, I personally think they're the best parts of the story, which David Walker, again, had a hand in writing. Yeah. And uh, we get introduced to a new uh, dirty word. It's uh, Fiddle Faddle has a companion, huh. Icky, Icky Yucky. So that, that, that Deadpool run, that 2013 run with Dugan and Parson, that was, uh, that was a really fantastic run, like best since Joe Kelly. So I really got to pick up this new run, because I know it has the same writer, so... And, like, the Power Man and Iron Fist issues in that old run were amazing as well, so... 
Um, I'll, def- I'll definitely have to start reading this new Deadpool stuff. Maybe it'll wash, like, the taste out of my mouth with this Marvel stuff a bit. Um, cause, yeah, no, I'll definitely have to get into that. Um, yeah, I mean, as I said, like, uh, uh, um, if it was up to me, if I wasn't doing this podcast, I still probably wouldn't be buying the book. Like, I wouldn't be buying the book. Um, let's stop doing it. Obviously, I'm buying the book, but yeah, um, so, yeah, and, like, that's a shame, because, you know, I'd like to, I, I mean, it's not, it's not terrible, I just, yeah, I wouldn't feel inclined to spend money on it, um, and so I really have a problem with Iron Fist in the book, uh, it's just, it's just not really my cup of tea right now, um, mm. you know, and, like, I'm fine with, like, other Power Man Iron Fist stuff, it's just this stuff is, yeah, I mean, I am... Now that this arc is over, though, I am interested to see where it goes. In fact, mm-hmm. like, if I, yeah, if I wasn't reading the book, and if I knew this arc was over, I probably would pick up the next issue, because I do want to see if, like, you know, they change it up a bit, or if it just gets better. Um, now that they're, you know, back in business, and they can hopefully stop the, you know, Drugged up, Danny. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, I, yeah, it, it, I pretty much have the same opinion as I did last time with Power Man Iron Fist 3. Like, you know, I mean, if you, if you're liking this, keep picking it up. If you hated it, then it, it's not gonna change for you. Um, yeah. Like, I guess my recommendation to buy is purely on how you've been enjoying it yourself so far, so. Yeah. And you can pick this up from any local comic book store, obviously. Um, I'm sure it's probably on Marvel Unlimited as well, or is that, or, no, it wouldn't be, because they come out later, don't they? I don't know, I don't... The online, the online service? Yeah. It's, I think it uh, takes six months. Yeah, to yeah, I was just thinking that. But yeah, um, yeah, God, uh, well, Carl, thank you for being positive, because I, I fear I was quite negative this episode. <laughs> For our first time back after a month, um, but yeah, next next uh, when's the next issue of this come out? About three weeks. Okay, so well, the next episode will be back to the old school stuff. Um, I can't remember what number we're up to because it's been a while. But yeah, we're we're in that kung fu killer arc, so. Yes, good stuff coming there. Um, more plot holes to poke fun at, I'm sure, but, you know, good stuff. Um, more Irish names to mispronounce. Oh, Alan, his best friend. Where'd he go? He's supposed to be his best friend. Why isn't he here? Wait, did he die? I can't even remember. I guess we'll get up to that, won't we? Um, all right, well, uh, you got anything to add? It's good to be back. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, until next time, may we'll be covering Iron Fist number eleven. By the way, it's eleven. Where? Oh wow, we're getting it. Yeah, wrecking crew. Are you sure we're not an issue before that? No, because it's the whole chakra crap. Um, here, let me. I got it. Let me. Uh, yeah, yeah, no. But the last episode we did was uh, Iron Fist nine. Yep. No, yep, we did The Dragon yes. Dies at Midnight. That was the last episode we did on the old series. So we didn't finish this hot mess with Chaka. No, we haven't finished the Chaka arc yet. Alright, I'm dreaming that. Yeah. So Iron Fist 10 is the next one. Um... <laughs> So yeah, until next time, may your fiddle faddle become unto things of iron. And sayonara. Peace. Peace. Iron Fist and all the characters in these comics are properties of Marvel and Disney. And any music or images we use belong to their respective copyright holders. And we do this for fun, so please don't sue us. You can contact us at sonsofthedragonpodcast at gmail.com. Just send us 
mail, comments, thoughts, send us anything you want really, even if it's not about Iron Fist. Um, and if you don't want it read it on the air, just mention that. Um, you can also reach us at Facebook, the Immortal Iron Fist Podcast, Sons of the Dragon, our Twitter, at Iron Fist Podcast, our SoundCloud, soundcloud.com forward slash Sons of the Dragon with hyphens where the spaces are. Our YouTube, Connor Carl, just search Iron Fist Podcast on YouTube and you'll find us real quick. And then there's our WordPress, Sons of the Dragon, the Immortal Iron Fist Podcast dot WordPress.com. We are also on iTunes. Feel free to rate us there. If you rate us less than five stars, well, just tell us what we're doing wrong and we'll try and improve that. And last but not least, we are on Podcast Garden in the literature section. And thanks to Thomas Tissot for the theme song at the start. And thanks. <laughs>